Hello everyone, welcome to this presentation. I'm Nimesh and I'm one of the organizers of the Flatland competition. So for those of you who aren't aware of what Flatland is or haven't participated in the previous challenges, what is Flatland about? It's basically a problem that focuses on multi-agent reinforcement learning on trains. The primary goal with Flatland is to benchmark and improve the planning of dense traffic in complex networks. What makes Flatland relevant is that it is a real world problem. Because of this, we are collaborating with the Swiss, the German and the French national railway companies. Companies like them are constantly expanding their networks and at the same time, the traffic in their networks gets more and more dense. This has blown up to the point where how they should manage this traffic has become a very important problem to them. We have been working on Flatten for the past three years, and over this period, the community has grown quite large. We've gathered quite a few people who are passionate about this problem, and in front of you are the people who are currently actively involved in the project itself. The expertise of these people in their various domains has helped shape Flatland into the environment that it is today. Let's talk a little bit more about the problem that we've been trying to solve together as a community. At its core, it's the vehicle rescheduling problem. To give a little bit of background, at the moment, to manage traffic and networks in real life, railway companies use methods based on operations research, or OR for short. These methods worked well, but they don't work well enough if you have quite a lot of stochastic factors in your environment, like malfunctions and deadlocks. The delay caused by one train could lead to the delay of multiple other trains. Let's take a look at this example. In this example, we have two trains, red and green, both who want to share the same shared path. But given that there's only a single path and two of them, one of them has to wait for the other to pass in order to be able to use the path, no matter which of these three scenarios it's in. Normally, this would be fine, but let's assume that the green train has been delayed and the red train, which depends on it, will also get delayed because of that. And let's imagine a much complex scenario where multiple other trains depend on the red train to leave. This could just cause chaos completely. Or our methods do not handle such situations elegantly. In practice, if you start accounting for the number of trains in a network and the number of potential reasons that can cause delays, things can get out of hand really fast. Deadlocks can occur unexpectedly even if the methods try to account for it and plan ahead. Trains may not always be able to use their planned route. This could happen due to a variety of reasons. Perhaps there's a medical emergency on board, or there's been an accident somewhere ahead. Maybe the train itself or the train in front has had a mechanical malfunction. Even slightly less dramatic reasons like a passenger holding the door open, or a lot of people boarding at once, or even simply bad weather. All of them can cause problems to railway companies and lead to delays, which will not only affect the train itself, but any train behind it. This is why solving such complex scenarios using OR doesn't really scale well. Let's take a look at this example, which is very similar to the previous example that we just saw. In this example, two groups of trains in red and green are moving in opposite directions and want to use the same shared track. Initially, it looks like things are under control and the red trains will just have to pause temporarily until the green trains have left, and then they can proceed to their destination. But let's say, a green train arrives at the scene at time step two, and this train was delayed due to a particular reason. Now, the red trains will have to wait until this train moves along in order to proceed to their destination because they cannot use their tracks until this train has left as well. Likewise, let's imagine another red train which is also delayed now arrives and enters the scene at time step four. Because of this, the green trains will never be able to exit their track which means that the red trains will never be able to proceed to their destination, which results in a complete deadlock overall. This can be a catastrophic situation for railway companies. It's also important to note that these nodes do not represent individual rails, but something at a little bit of a higher level, like connection between cities or stations within a city. 
regardless, they, it captures the complexity of the situation pretty well. The Swiss Federal Railway Network, with more than 10,000 train runs every day, with trains running as close as 90 seconds behind each other, is one of the most complex traffic networks in the world. Such a network is, of course, very fragile and minor disturbances can lead to catastrophic events that affect the whole network. Current operations research approaches are not able to scale to the full complexity of the network and we are not able to find optimal solutions for any occurring situations for the whole network. Therefore, we need to subdivide the problem into smaller problems. The dynamics, however, of our network are long-lasting and effects have to be looked at at a global scale. We therefore look at new approaches such as multi-agent reinforcement learning, where we believe we can scale up to the full size of real-world problems and with a short inference time also find solutions in real time that can then be re-optimized all the time and therefore we can react to any occurring situation, be it minor or major, delays in our network. Let's talk a little bit about how machine learning can help. Machine learning has recently proven to be useful for real-world problems like chip flow planning and protein folding. Machine learning need not necessarily mean a reinforcement learning agent to solve the environment. For example, you could augment an OR method to use a heuristic derived from a machine learning model to enable the OR method to take better decisions. We've seen some progress in this direction as well quite recently. Alternatively, you could push for a complete end-to-end -end deep RL solution. We've also began to see places where RL has completely taken over, where previously other techniques dominated. The best example would be AlphaGo by DeepMind in the game Go. This gives us the confidence that there's quite a lot to exploit in this field by using machine learning. I'll now hand it over to my colleague Deepam, who will explain a little bit more about the flatland environment and He'll also walk you through how some people have tried to approach this problem. Hello, everyone. I'm Deepam, and I'll be talking about the Flatland environment. The Flatland is actually a simulated environment for multi agent reinforcement learning on trains. Each map of Flatland has cells as its individual units, and each cell can contain either an empty cell or particular rails, which are shown on the right side here. Once a train reaches each cell, they are only allowed to transition based on the particular kind of cell that it is on, which is shown in this diagram. Stations are generated once the rails are generated and they are placed randomly on locations on the map. Once the stations are generated, the agents, which are the trains, they are added onto the map with a particular start end pair. One station can have multiple trains starting from there and we do try to balance it in terms of uh, outflow and inflow to make it more realistic. Flatland maps are completely procedurally generated, which means they are good for generalization in machine learning and reinforcement learning and we can get a better sense that it is not memorizing the map. This is an example of how the flatland environment looks. Here are a few more examples of how the flatland environment looks like. As you can see on the left, there are much fewer cities and it's a much smaller map in general. Whereas the, on the right, there are even more cities and more tracks, which means that agents get to generalize on not only different positions of tracks, but also different sizes of cities, which makes the problem even more general and realistic. Of course, nothing in the real world is for certain. So to account for the delays and uncertainties, we occasionally have the trains malfunctioning. If you can see the animation here, some of the trains are actually getting hit with a cross, which means that they cannot move for a certain duration of time. And likewise, if there are trains directly behind it, they can either take a new route or they get stuck there. And that's where the question of rescheduling comes to the picture. We believe that one of the really good ways of getting a community excited about a project is to host a competition around it. And Flatland being 
accessible with its small environments as well as very challenging in the problem and the scale that it can grow to is a prime candidate for a competition. Likewise, there were multiple competitions since 2019 and the first iteration which was held in 2019 had over 700 participants and a thousand submissions and the community took it really well and that's why we were even back for more going forward. In late 2020 and early 2021, Platlan hosted a bunch of competitions affiliated with multiple conferences like NeurIPS, AMLD and ICAPS. It, had, it saw over 1000 participants and 2500 submissions and even introduced a new track, the RL track, because OR solutions, fortunately or unfortunately, however you want to look at it, are still much better than RL solutions. But we do want to promote RL solutions so that people take part in it with even more fervor. And both the tracks saw really explosive growth as well as really innovative solutions. And I'll be talking about a few of them soon. So how are the competitions evaluated? Well, we leverage the power of Platland to grow their grid sizes exponentially and the, hence the complexity. So each submission basically has to solve progressively harder environments as it goes forward. And it needs to keep doing this for two hours and as many problems as it can solve, that's the score that it achieves. Of course, there are other metrics like the reward, which is also taken into account. And the reward takes into account how fast the trains were able to go there. But as a uh, general rule, because the complexity is increasing, the higher the scores, it's increasingly harder to achieve. So the gap between 200 and 210 would be actually much more easier to achieve than a gap from 300 to 310. What do the solutions of such a complex environment look like? Well, but to start with, we release a bunch of baselines, which are all reinforcement learning models that we trained on the flatland environment and are, they are available at flatland.aicrowd.com. One of them is centralized critic PPO, which is basically a model which shares the policies across all the trains and has one centralized critic model for how all the trains are performing. There are also simpler models like imitation learning as well as fit domain specific ideas like frame skipping and action masking for invalid train transitions and similar ideas. Participants, of course, went above and beyond such uh, simple baselines that we gave and have a whole variety of really exciting solutions. They range from operations research to reinforcement learning and even hybrid solutions, which are my personal favorites. We're describing a few top solutions from the competition. Starting with the team and old driver, whose solution is actually one of the top operations research solution that we receive. I'll explain their method in brief, but they've actually published a much more comprehensive video of their solution. So their idea is to use safe interval path planning, which is a form of prioritized planning where the agent with the shortest path is given priority. Then the agent with the next shortest path, which does not coincide with the paths that, that have already been used, is given priority. And going forward, this is how it is done for all the agents. For safe interval, the idea is to have some buffer, which uh, allows for the malfunctions to safely be uh, planned for and there are other extra things that they implemented in their method but 
in the interest of time i'll only be describing this much next we are looking at team jbr hsc who have the top rl solution in the competition they use a shared proximal policy optimization algorithm on all the agents as well as tree observations which are natively available in the environment but i believe that they have some customization on top they also have custom reward shipping with very domain specific ideas which is generally good for reinforcement learning but personally my favorite idea that they use is a very simple one they have an additional ml model which predicts whether the train will reach successfully and only if it crosses a certain threshold do they allow the train to leave at that point such a simple heuristic does not need to be used with an rl agent it could be used anywhere it could even be used with operation research ideas so that is a brief summary of this team's ideas of course they have done a lot more experimentation lastly we are looking at team netc who also have one of the top rl solutions in the competition they actually have a rl solution with apex pqn and ppo combined which is a distributed off policy rl algorithm and ppo is a on policy rl algorithm so that is an interesting combination that they went with along with that they have a custom graph observation which i think is probably one of the best ways to describe this problem and uh, going forward i would be more interested in looking at these solutions even with graph neural networks which i believe some uh, participants have used and they also have very domain specific reward shipping which is shown here on the right they have very particular rewards for deadlocks and uh, stopping at switches missing paths all kinds of domain specific ideas for flatland and that really encapsulates how this problem will evolve for rl rl is very specific to the rewards that it is trained on so having good reward shaping is very important to the problem and it shows very clearly because the top solutions are using reward shaping and that concludes my brief summary of team etc finally we are taking a look at the top solutions of the previous competition so the top rl solutions are close to a score of 200 which is not as good as the top or solutions but it is still pretty good and much more than we anticipated to progress within just a year and now these are the scores of the top war solutions and as you can see the top 3 teams are actually really fighting it out and because the progress is harder and harder as you go towards the top these solutions are actually way far ahead above the rl solutions currently but we do hope to see further progress in this phase and are really excited about it What we've shown you so far was all from the existing versions of Flatland and from the previous competitions held surrounding Flatland. We've been constantly working on Flatland behind the scenes, and we are pretty excited to introduce the next version of Flatland, Flatland 3.0. This adds quite a few significant changes to the environment in context of the problem statement itself. Timing and punctuality are crucial to the operations of railways. Up until this point, the trains in Flatland were allowed to depart and arrive whenever they desired. The only goal was to make every train reach its destination as fast as possible, while trying to account for any unforeseen delays due to malfunctions. However, things are quite different in the real world. Trains have specific schedules. They are expected to depart and arrive at particular times. This concept has been introduced in environment in Flatland 3.0. Trains now have a time window within which they are expected to start and reach their destination. 
The goal here would be to construct the best schedule where all trains arrive at their target destination with a minimal delay with respect to the requested arrival time. If the trains do not arrive at their target at all, then additional penalties are factored in based on common principles of railway operation. The schedule requests are formulated in such a way that every train has more than enough time to reach its destination. The challenge is to use the train's extra time budget in a way that all trains arrive with minimal delay. You could let other trains pass by, you could get out of the way yourself, or you could minimize the amount of time a train spends on the infrastructure. This adds a new layer of complexity to the environment, the solutions for which could help railway companies save a lot of time and money and provide better service to their passengers. That brings us to the end of the presentation. I'd just like to express my gratitude to the organizers of ICAPS for giving us this incredible opportunity to present here. It's been an absolute pleasure to have the ICAPS community engage in Flatland. We hope to continue working with Flatland to push the bounds of reinforcement learning for multi-agent vehicle rescheduling. Thank you.